In today's video, I'm going to be putting out a response to a question that I received. And when I read it, I knew I immediately had to drop what I was doing, get the camera set up, and go on video and record the message that came through from the Ascended Master Isis and Kuan Yin in regards to a question I received about self-respect. I just thought it was one of the most beautiful things I had ever received and I was really, really touched and honored by such a vulnerable question about how to respect ourselves. What I'm reading here is in um, response to a conversation ongoing about how this mother is working her way through the Conscious Motherhood Masterclass. I asked her, how, how are things going? And she responded, to be honest, I watched the first video and I'm stuck. You started talking about self-respect and how to respect myself or how I respect myself. To be honest, I've never been taught this. I've always been told to respect everyone else first and never learned how or what it means to respect myself. Do you have any suggestions on how I can go deeper here and learn how to self-respect? I love that question so much. And there is a lot to say about that. First of all, thank you to the mother who wrote that to me. Thank you so much. It lit a fire in my heart. I am so honored to, to receive questions like that. So if you have any questions, you're watching this video and you have any questions that you um, would like to be put onto video and onto this YouTube channel, please feel free to message me. I just was so touched by that because I think that there are so many people who could benefit from asking that question and being willing to receive an answer. I know that I have been on a journey with self-respect for sure and for the longest time I didn't even know that that's what I was craving. I didn't even know that that's what I was wanting because self-respect and reverence, which we're going to talk about here, are so important in our ascension process and I'm going to tell you why. Let's start with the phrase, I was always taught to respect others, right? I was always taught that respecting others is way more important than showing my self-respect. I am sure there are many of you watching this who can absolutely relate to that being a major part of your upbringing. It really matters that you are respecting other people. It really, really, really matters um, that you are taught to um, be respectful of others. Now, I want to dive into this a little bit because I want to respond to that in, with a question, were you taught to truly, genuinely have respect and reverence for other people? Or were you taught to obey them like a dog, like, like a dog obeying the owner, right? I think we have all, well, maybe not, but I know that I have absolutely felt that sensation of um, being in a very vulnerable position and you feel like you have to obey what is being requested of you otherwise you could um, be in a lot of danger or your needs aren't going to be met like very basic life needs are not going to be met and so obedience that feeling of, of like we need to be obedient is is co it comes from a fear response now that might sound pretty obvious, but it comes from those moments where we really are terrified because I'm terrified of what could happen to me if I'm not obedient. And this happens in such, oh my gosh, in so many everyday ways. There is this low hum, you know, just in, in our matrix right now of just that, that buzzing, anxious anxiety feeling like okay if I don't go with the program I'm going to be in trouble I'm going to have to face a lot of um, terrorizing situations now reverence 
is a very different energy than obedience. And we have to start with these terms and with the vocabulary here before I can get to the part of like, do you have any suggestions on how I can deepen into self-respect? Well, yes, I absolutely do. But unless we talk about these very like under the surface, deeply, deeply rooted under the ground sort of uh, mindsets and programming that is out there, then you know, I, I could tell you how to, to be more um, respectful of yourself, more loving of yourself, but if we don't really get to the root of some of these words and definitions, it's not as effective, okay? So we have to start here. Reverence, totally different energy. <laughs> totally different energy than obedience. Reverence is aspirational. It looks up. It doesn't look down. It looks, it, it's an opening and looking up. It asks, how can I be excellent in the way that this present moment is showing me and teaching me excellence? That is what reverence is. Now, we are so hungry. We are so hungry collectively and individually for reverence and respect. It is, we are starving for it. I'm just going to read what I channeled here. We are so hungry for this collectively and individually that we have the potential and even lived experience of creating chaos or extreme ways of lashing out subconsciously sometimes, a lot of times, because we want to be hit in the heart with reverence and respect. And that takes a lot of maturity and wisdom to see it that way. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that are when there are moments where you feel like something has terrified you, has absolutely terrified you, <sighs> traumatized you, um, we, we, at this point, we have all touched in to extremely traumatic life events. When those life events are happening to you, what it's asking you, it's, it's, it's hitting you deeply because it's asking you to go that deep within you. It's asking, can you, can you respect yourself enough? Can you have that much reverence for yourself to really explore within with so much lucid respect for this present moment. Can you do that? That's, that's the whole dialogue that the higher self is always inviting us into, deepening into the present moment, right? We hear that all the time, but what does that mean? What does that actually look like? Sometimes it looks like having so much respect for yourself because of how difficult or terrifying going into those deep places where the terror has touched in or the fear has touched in. This is something that I've lived. This is something that I've lived time and time again where there's just this event that happens in my life that is just like, why is this happening? Why would something like that happen? And the best <laughs> response that I've come to so far is because it is asking me life, the great teacher of life is asking me to have more respect, have more reverence for life, for the teacher that life is, for the teacher that earth is, for the teacher that this entire experience is. Have some respect for all, all of what is going on right now and, so importantly, and that you wanted to contribute. Can you feel the magnitude of that? You wanted to contribute. You wanted to leave your fingerprints all over it. You wanted to contribute. That is my belief. That is, that is a core belief of mine. We say yes to these lives. We say yes with a lot of intention and with a lot of aspirations. 
And why, why would it be that practicing so much reverence and self-respect would be so threatening to specific agendas? Why, why is that? Well, because when you start to dip into self-respect and reverence, you start to develop your maturity and your wisdom. And what would happen right now if everyone decided to start acting like adults and <laughs> clear thinking and engaging in respectful conversation? What would happen then? What would happen then? I am personally being, you know, really feeling so drawn um, to be engaging in that conversation in, in, in more conversations and feeling how the only way to do that in a way that's worth my time is to come to those very difficult conversations where, you know, the people that I'm engaging with might have a lot of fear. Let's just say it that way. A lot of fear about current situations. The only way that I know I'm going to be heard is if there's just massive amounts of respect brought first to myself, but in engaging with with these conversations, having total respect and reverence for the other person. Otherwise, it's not going to be productive for me. Can you see why that would be beaten out of us? Can you, I mean, I can. That has been completely beaten out of us, of humanity. To be able to engage with life in a way that is reverent, that is respectful, that appreciates all aspects of how you know, how we're built, what our primal needs are, community, sexuality, long-term um, friendships, partnerships, um, all of these things that are, you know, traditions, gathering, all of these things that we, as a, as a humanity, as, as people, we have deep reverence and respect for, for that for those primal needs. And, and now our most primal desires and, um, and ways that, that we can connect as community are, are being, you know, tampered with, to say the least, to say the least. And so, this conversation about like, how can I respect myself? Well, it's really, really difficult. I completely understand how difficult this can be when, when you look around you, you can't find solid examples of respectful behavior and reverent behavior. Then yeah, it's really difficult to figure out how to give that back to yourself. So let's talk about a few ways that you can start to bring reverence and respect back into, into your life. The first example, and I love this so much, first way, slow down. Slow, slow, slow down. Honor yourself with the time that you really do need. Honor yourself by giving yourself buffers in the day, not feeling like you need to jump from this to that to the next thing with no breathing time in between. I have started blocking off 20 minute blocks, you know, in between the things that I need to do because I want to slowly ease and, <laughs> and drop in fully present to what is requiring my attention. So slowing down is deeply respectful. Giving yourself time. Giving yourself more time. So I think it is one of the, the most precious resources that we have is, is your time here. So be generous with yourself, with time. Take a weekend away. Take 
the time that you need, when you have big decisions in your life, set aside containers of time, stretching into the time that you give yourself really getting, pre the more present that you can become in the time that you give yourself, that you set aside for yourself, you can stretch it. If you know what I'm talking about, please let me know in the comments. Another way to start um, developing self-respect is to completely stop judging other people and situations and circumstances. Just just drop the judgment. It's exhausting and it's not respectful. And it but by being able to start to um to be more respectful to situations, other people by by just blessing more respect, sending that blessing of more respect, the the prayer of more respect not judging it, not judging yourself, not judging other people to drop the judgment. That is what I believe, judgment day, right? What is judgment day? It's when we stop it with the judgment. That's what it is. It's just done. We, we're done with the judgment of how it looks, of how it feels. We just stop judging it. Stop judging it. Just don't judge it. <laughs> and instead, what is it that you are willing to accept and what are you willing to not accept? That's a much healthier way to be engaging with life. I am willing to accept this. I am not willing to accept that. So I am walking away from that, from that which I will not accept. If I cannot accept it, if it is not showing respect, if it is not, um, assisting me in walking towards my empowerment and my, uh, you know, my grounded ascension journey, right? My journey of like, um, the full potential of who I want to be, then I'm walking away from that. Then it doesn't come with, we don't have to judge it for it to not come with, you know? It can just like water off a duck's back, right? And we're, we're moving on. And we don't have to spend the time and the energy in judgment. If you are like this beautiful mother who emailed me and it's like you have an easier time engaging with the, um, with the idea of people outside of you, right? The, the respecting others, this is, this applies like to be able to completely drop judgment of other people, right? First, what that's going to do, it's just going to clear up so much space and energy within you. It's going to just feel a lot lighter inside if you can drop judgment and then, then of others. And then you can start to bring that towards yourself, now, I'm all for it, like, just bring it to yourself, just go there. But I understand the, the linear feeling of this journey, and sometimes we just need a starting point. But to stop with the judgment and replace that with that just compassion, softness, listening, the most... The, the times I have felt the deepest embodiment of respect is when I am deeply, deeply listening, deeply, deeply curious. Now take that to the next level. Can you look at your life, look at your human body, this journey, your lifetime? from the perspective of the higher self and have so much curiosity, so much listening to the human journey. Can you be in that dialogue with yourself? Can you feel brave enough to engage in that dialogue between you and, and you? 
and you here, right? It's all, it's all here, but it can be helpful to in your, you know, in your mind, because for some of us, we just have su still such incredibly active minds, right? Um, I know for myself, I, I have a very active mind. So I have to give my mind containers and ways to be present with me, right? That's why guided meditations are so helpful. And this is just an extension of that where you can start to curiously engage and listen to what you have to say about the things that are bothering you, about the things that you feel like you can no longer accept. Another way to truly deepen into incredible amounts of uh, self-respect and reverence is to have a very clear connection to your yes and a very clear connection to your no. And it doesn't need to be aggressive. It can be very graceful. It can be so graceful when you get a phone call or something like, and you know, somebody wants to, to meet up with you or whatever, whatever it is, and you're just not, it's a no, right? It's really a no. You wish it wasn't a no. There's part of you that's like, oh, that does sound nice, but it's a no. If you can drop into the no with just as much love as you would drop into a yes, right? With just as much love as you would say, um, oh yeah, I would love to be there. What time? What can I bring? How can I help? All of the yes, 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 right? Can you be just as loving with your no? Or if you're not ready to be so in your no, I want to sleep. Let me, let, can I get back to you when I'm sitting at my calendars? Can I get back to you when I have a better grasp on my schedule? You've caught me in a busy moment. And then be with yourself about it, right? A lot of us are still really building up the ways in which we can just say what we need to say very honestly and very clearly. I completely respect that if you're still on that journey too. I'm hearing right now from the Ascended Master Isis that it's like this quality of, of self-respect and of reverence, reverence for life, reverence for the teacher of life, the te the, that life is the ultimate teacher. And when we can drop into being reverent of that and humbled to the power of life and to the power of the unknown. When we can, can be totally aware of how magnificent we are and yet humble enough to realize our part, having reverence for the way of all of this, this is this is what they don't want you to know. That's what I'm hearing. This is like, this is what they don't want you to know is that you actually could start to have so much respect and so much reverence for the life that you do have and for the time that we do have. And we could embrace that and celebrate that in a way, in ways that work for our families. The remembering, the remembrance of reverence is like a, man, it's a, it's, it is, it has a lot of energy within it. It has that platinum ray energy that the Ascended Master Isis is really, really, really uh, potent with. Platinum ray, excellence, reverence wonder, you know, that jaw-dropping wonder of when we see someone who's, who has accomplished something that really deserves, you know, a mastery, mastery that deserves respect, an accomplished artist or an accomplished musician, 
someone who has devoted their life, devoted, you know, the, the, the time that they've been given to something beautiful and something that, that we really admire, that really opens our hearts. This is the essence of the human spirit. We are reverent people when we are peaceful and connected to our highest source. We are reverent people. We have forgotten that we are reverent people, but we are reverent people. We are respectful people. We are a, we are a collective that does have the power and the ability to see more so how we are the same than how we are different and to be in respectful reverence of the unique gift that each individual brings. It is... It is exquisitely human. It is exquisitely human. I'm grateful for the earth. I'm grateful for the beauty of the earth, the beauty of the seasons and the rhythms that we see around us because if you don't know where to start, if nothing in this video is sounded like a place that feels good for you, go sit out in nature and look around and just look around and think about what's going on in 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 the natural world and it is holy. This is the peace that grows us spiritually into true maturity. When you can start to have reverence in the way that I'm talking about and not make anybody wrong. Nobody has to be wrong for us to strive for and anchor the solutions that we want to see. Again, it's just, it's, it's about rising up above the, the right and wrong of it and just staying so consumed and focused on the solutions and in the prayer for the solution and blessing every single piece that comes your way that is fueling your life to continue towards that solution. So I hope in the coming weeks that you can start to see moments of reverence in your day. I hope that there is grace in the present moment where you can soften and wonder and be in wonder and be silent and allow the silence of the mind and allow the feeling of, of respect and reverence into your heart. And that even, you know, as you continue with that practice that even your inhale and exhale start to feel reverent to you. The very breath that we are, you know, privileged to have, that breath of life. Reverence, gratitude. When I was speaking earlier about being connected to a clear yes and a clear no, the final message I, I'm hearing to share is that it's okay to be firm. In fact, it's preferable. That's what I was trying to touch into earlier. There's a firmness, a solidness to respect, right? It's solid. It's a solid, it's not wishy-washy, it's not, you know, it's just, it's clear. It's real clear. That energy of just like, I'm gonna be very clear right now. I have so much respect, it just, it's respect. It's respect for self and it's respect for you. 
so the air conditioner the air is turned on and the airbnb i'm staying at so i'm feeling like that is maybe our cue that it's time to wrap it up today thank you so much for being here in this video i would love to continue this conversation in the comments i know that you um have beautiful things to add to this conversation this is a big conversation um, I would love to hear your stories or just your insights that you are taking away as you dip even deeper into self-respect and reverence. I love you so much. May your journey be blessed with the miracles only you could be so brilliant to command. I love you.